Welcome back. The back of the cabinet is now glued into place and the top shelf is glued in as well. So now the next step is to build a reinforcement for the base of the bookcase and then we'll build the face frame. Once the face frame is done, this cabinet is pretty much finished, so I'm anxious, I'm sure you are. Let's get going. Okay, the base pieces that are going to reinforce the base and add some rigidity to the bottom of the cabinet could really be out of any wood. I am making it out of maple. These are pieces that are left over from the shelves that we built. They're nice looking pieces of wood, but most importantly is they're nice and flat and straight. So what I've done is I've set up the uh, saw stop to rip this piece to the width that I need, but I'm going to rip this short piece first as a test to make sure it's absolutely perfect, and then we'll rip the other pieces that we need. Okay, I'm going to go check this fit. Okay, that's uh, pretty good, but I'm going to make it just a smidge wider. And now we can rip one of our long pieces. Alright, that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and rip the other pieces now. I think I'm going to cut the length of this down just a little bit before I rip it. Alright, I've turned the bookcase around a little bit. That wasn't easy to do. But I've got it so that I can see to work in here. And more importantly, once this is done, I want to be able to stand the bookcase up. So I'm hoping to lift it from the other end, slide it down, and just stand it right up. And I've got enough room up here to do that. So I've got the pieces cut out for the base reinforcement. They're just clamped lightly into place right now. I just hold them there until I get ready to glue up. What I'm doing is really adding reinforcement here next to the back and next to the two ends and across the front. So if anybody ever decides to drag this big giant bookcase across the floor, it'll have a lot more strength to resist kind of tearing up. Now once these perimeter pieces are glued in, I'm going to put a couple of cross braces across here as well. I've cut those just a smidge narrower so that they don't come right to the bottom. Again, if someone decides to move this bookcase at some point, there'll be a little less resistance to sliding on the floor with those raised up just a bit. So I'm ready to glue up. Let's get that done. The perimeter bracing for the base is now glued in and the glue is all set. So it's time to put in the two cross braces it's going to be pretty easy. I've cut a couple of same length spacers that I'm going to put in here to use to put my cross brace on top 
just to make sure that it's perfectly level across here. I've also taken my cross braces and I've cut pocket holes in the ends. That way I can put some glue on this piece and I can use the pocket holes to secure it and I won't have to worry about clamps. Now I will be putting a cross brace up here as well. I'll use those same spacers but to space down from the other side of the bookcase. Once these two cross braces are in and the glue has set up, I'll be ready to stand this bookcase up and get to work on the face frame. So let's get going on this. I've been milling the lumber for the face frames. I've got this ready to go. It's ready to rip down the size and start cutting out the pieces. But I wanted to talk about this. I referred to this in an earlier video, and this is what actually gave me the inspiration for how I want to build the face frames. This is a piece of drip edge. It's really lightweight metal. It only measures a little less than two one hundredths of an inch in thickness, yet it's pretty stiff. Now, if I hammered out this turn in here and have it just a flat piece of the same metal, not so stiff. In fact, you could see that as a shelf, that would be somewhat of a problem. But with this bend in it, it's pretty stiff. So what we want to do is we want to replicate that idea with our face frames. We want to put a piece across the front of the shelf and then wrap a piece underneath so that we in essence get that L shape that's in this drip edge that gives it that extra rigidity. So that's what we're shooting for. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how wide we want to make these face frames. And that's all about the look of the bookcase. So let me show you how I kind of go about figuring out how wide to make those face frames. There's probably some kind of formula that will help you determine the correct size for a face frame, but I don't know it. So what I have to do is I have to make up some samples and take a look. Now this particular piece is an inch and a half wide. And I know already that I want to put a 1 8 inch reveal over here on the side. In other words, have this face frame sticking out an eighth of an inch this way. So when I put this up here, I can just clamp it into place and then back off and take a look. I decided that looked a little bit too small. And instead of just jumping to the next size, I went all the way up to my widest piece, which is one and seven eighths inches. And I looked at that, and I actually kind of like the look of that, but I'm concerned that it's taking up a little bit too much space on the shelf itself. I think uh, the folks that I'm making these shelves for want as much space as possible on the shelves and that might just be a little bit too much. So then I backed back down and went to this piece which is one and five eighths and that actually looks pretty good. I kind of like the look of that. But what I settled on was one and three quarters of an inch. And let me show you what that looks like and why I kind of locked in on that size.
All right, the front of the face frame, the piece that runs across these shelves, sorry about the blue tape there. I tried using some double stick tape and it wasn't quite enough to hold that heavy maple up there. Um, this needs to be uh, one and nine sixteenths. And the reason for that is because these shelves are a little bit over three quarters of an inch thick and my face frame material that I've already milled is three quarters of an inch. So I really need, when I put this piece down here underneath, I need this to be flush on the bottom. So I'm kind of locked into this dimension right here. And this piece that will run all the way across will be in like this and it'll glue to the face frame forming that L shape we spoke about a minute ago. So when I looked at this piece, I decided that the uh, whole system looked better if the style, so to speak, of the face frame was a little bit bigger than the rail. And the one and three quarter looked just about right with the reveal that I wanted and this piece running across. I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera and it's going to be hard to see until we get a full size piece up here but I like this combination. I think this is going to look pretty good. So bottom line, our vertical or style pieces of the face frame will be one and three quarter inch. The front pieces will be one and nine sixteenths. And then our three quarter stock, I'll probably make this about an inch and a half wide. This is going to run across here so that it attaches to the face frame and attaches to the shelf underneath forming our L-shaped brace to help prevent any sag in the shelves. So that's how it's going to all go together. It's just a matter of cutting the pieces now. All of the pieces now are ripped to width for the various pieces that we need for the face frame. I've not cut everything to length yet. Uh, however, I have cut the two pieces for our vertical, let's call it the styles of the face frame. Those are cut to length. The uh, bookcase itself is sitting on half inch plywood on the floor, so I've got a half inch spacer over here. That way when I go to attach this, I don't have to worry about getting it even at the bottom. And here's gonna be the process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread glue on here really, really thin and I'm going to let it tack up for about five minutes and then I'm going to spread another coat of glue on just to make sure we don't starve the joint. Then when I put the piece up here, I'm going to use this handy dandy little tool. It's called a trim gauge. I'm not sure that this is even sold anymore. I've had this for years. It was originally made by Johnson Tools, but I'm not sure that they still have this. You could check online if you're interested, but the neat thing about this is, is that you can set a reveal edge and then use this. Like if you're trimming out a house and you wanted a certain reveal on everything, man, this is really speedy to put next to the piece, establish your reveal, and bang, put a nail in, bang, bang, and you can fly with this tool. I've had this for a long time and it's great, but I'm going to use it here to establish my 1 8 inch reveal over here on this edge. And when I get this up here and get that line established, I'm going to tack this in with a 23 gauge pinner. Now the nice thing about a 23 gauge pin is that it leaves such a tiny hole that after finishing you can't even see it. So it's great to hold it in position. Now, I'm still going to put clamps on to make sure we get a nice tight bond here but uh, this will really help keep it from sliding around. So that's the process. Let's get started gluing this up.
I've been cutting the individual face frame pieces piece by piece and gluing them into place. And I wanted to do that so I could really sneak up on a perfect fit and get these edges just absolutely tight and exact. And the way I'm doing that is I'm cutting them at the miter saw a little bit long and then I'm using my shooting board to just sneak up on the fit until I get it perfect. Once I get it perfectly fit lengthwise, then I'm gluing it in place, making sure that the top of that is exactly flush with the shelf. Once that's glued in place, then I'm coming back and gluing in the under brace, which goes underneath the shelf, to give it that rigidity. And I'm just using spring clamps to hold in place that last piece. So now I'm ready to put in the final piece up here at the top. So let's get that glued in. Okay, gluing this in is pretty straightforward. Just get some glue spread on the two contact edges of the piece. And there we go. Okay, this is the face frame here. And underneath here is this under support that we've added. And it extends all the way to the inside wall of the bookcase. And it's flush with the bottom of the rail of the face frame. And the face frame and this under support are glued together forming that L that sits underneath the shelf and helps provide that sag resistance. When the glue on this piece is dry, this project's essentially finished. Now I've been sanding the pieces as I go along as I'm doing the assembly, so really the only sanding left to do is just a little final sanding to get off my chalk marks and stuff, maybe go over it with some 220 grit paper and it's ready to go. The folks that are getting this are going to do the finishing. Whew, dodged a bullet there. So again, this is pretty much ready to go. Now I've got the smaller set that I still need to assemble, but it's going to be really easy compared to this. First of all, it's a lot smaller, has a couple less shelves, and I have a process. So I'll get that done and get this out the door. And by the way, it does fit. I've got a half an inch clearance up here on the top going out the door. And I am going to carry it out standing up because uh, laying it over on its side is really difficult in the shop. There's just not enough room to maneuver. We'll uh, turn it and lay it on its side once it's outside and I can load it into my truck. Well, that's it. I really look forward to seeing you in the next video and thank you so much for watching this one. Oh, and they remind me I'm supposed to tease the next video to get you to come back. Well, it's going to be something a little bit different than what I've done in the past. I, I think you just need to come back and see it. Look forward to seeing you then and again, thank you so very much.